Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be covering long tail bowlins. And I'm going to tie two, two different versions. Um, one is going to be the interlocking long tail bowlin. And the other one is going to be a double bowlin. Okay. Um, now, why do we need to know long tail bowlins? Uh, the reason is, is this is a fundamental building block for rescue litters. Now we can use it in a high angle environment and we can use it in a low angle or steep environment also. But we need to be able to do this quickly in order to get our system in place to either raise or lower a rescue litter. All right, so how do you, how do you do it? Okay, now the, we're going to be using two ropes and the reason we use two ropes in the rescue world, we always have redundancy. Okay, so if the orange is going to be our main line, we have to have a secondary line in case the main line fails. So in rescue work, you'll always see two ropes employed. So we have to tie these two together in a way we can facilitate hooking up a rescue litter. All right, so let's get started. So I'll start out with the orange. And first thing you need to know is how long to make a long tail. Okay, so um, there's no hard and fast rule, but it has to be long enough to do what the rope needs to do past the bowlins. Okay, so usually that's about eight to 10 feet. And what I do is I just find the ends does not have to be perfect. And if you think you're going to be running short, make it longer. We can always shorten a rope. We can't make it longer. Okay. So what I do is that's about three feet. It's about six feet. That's about nine feet or so. And then we'll just come up here and, and tie a knot. Okay. Because you have to remember at the end of each line, you're going to be tying either a figure eight on a bite or a stopper knot. So give yourself enough rope for that. All right. So let's start with the orange rope. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do interlocking bowlins. Now, everybody knows how to tie a bowlin, hopefully. And what you can do is find the end, you know, make your round turn, come through. Uh, just like a traditional bowling, but you, should, you can see how much rope I have here. It gets really clumsy to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called a snap bowling. We're going to make our same round turn like we normally do, but this time we're going to go uphill. We're going to flip it just like this. And then we're going to pull a bite through there. Okay. And now we can take all this rope all this rope in my hand and I can stick it through that bite. Now, something that's kind of interesting is if, if I take all this rope and, and put it through the loop this way, I'll create an outside bowling. If I come through the backside, I'll create an inside bowling. Uh, they're both equally strong, but uh, just keep that in mind though. Whichever direction you go with uh, will change the uh, position of your tail. Okay, so let's do an inside bowling. So we're going to come through the backside and we can put all this rope through. See how quick that is? And then uh, we want to keep our bowlings fairly small for rescue work. So I'm going to pinch it right here and then I'm going to dress my knot. Okay. And there's my bowling. Notice my tail's on the inside. Okay. All right, now we want to do the same thing in the green rope, but we want to capture this, okay? So the easiest way of doing that is before you even start is just pull your green line all the way through, okay? And then when you come up here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to round turn, go uphill, form a bite, we're going to take all this rope. Okay, now I would form an outside bowling if I did that. So I'm going to go on the backside. 
just to be consistent. It doesn't really matter as far as strength. Pull all that through. Okay, and we want to dress her knot. Okay, so now we have interlocking bowlins with long tails. And we can take a carabiner and our redundancy, hopefully you can see our redundancy here is both ropes are being captured. So if one rope were to fail, the other one would catch it. Okay. All right, so let's just make sure you can visualize that. Those are interlocking long tail bowlins for rescue litters. All right, so let's do something a little bit different. Let's untie all this stuff. And we're gonna start from the beginning and I'm gonna show you how to incorporate a rescue ring which a lot of people use. And you can see how long it takes to untie this versus how quick it was to tie it with the snap bowling. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing again. This time we'll do uh, outside bowlings just to mix it up. So we're gonna do the same thing, do our snap, Pull that down. Now, here's the, the key here. We want to capture this ring first. So, don't drop it. Okay, now remember the first time we went this way, this time we're going to go front, back, front to the back. Okay. And then we're going to dress her knot. <coughs> okay. <coughs> we got her ring captured. And we have an outside bowling. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to stick this rope through the ring. <coughs> we're going to do our snap bowling. Okay, we're going to front to the back this time to match the the orange rope. We're going to dress her knot. And now we have the ring captured on both bowlines. And we have two outside bowlines, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, now this gives you a master point in order to hang your litter, uh, rescuer, or anything else you need to do capture on this ring. And these rings are rated for thousands of pounds. Okay, so they're very strong. Okay. All right, so there's two different ways of doing the uh, interlocking bowling, and then the, the ring capture bowling. And you could even interlock these two ropes too if you wanted to. Okay, so that's a choice too, but this ring is so strong, it, it really doesn't matter. But, uh, all right, so I'm going to show you one more way. And a lot of people use this third method uh, simply because it's quicker. Uh, it, to me, it doesn't look as good, but as far as strength, it's, it's plenty strong. Okay, and we're going to assume we're not going to use a ring this time, just for simplicity, but you could if you wanted to. Okay, so uh, in this version, we're just going to tie uh, the two ropes together as one knot. Okay, so we would make our round turn, fold it up, pull our bite, stick our Two, two tails through. Okay, we want to pinch, pinch these two and dress her knot. And 
make sure they're nice and even. Okay, and that's another way we can do this. And then we can take our carabiner and capture both loops. So we have our redundancy, okay? Now notice it, it doesn't look as good as the interlocking bolens, but uh, it's, it's a little bit quicker and it's plenty strong enough. Okay, so we have that. And then we can take our tails at this point and um, if we want to do a uh, figure eight on a bite on one for the for the victim, we can do that. Okay. And know whether that'll go to your victim. And this is adjustable, okay? So if it's too long, we can make this not shorter. And then the last one, we can just tie a, a figure, eight, figure eight or something. Anything as a stop or not because usually the rescuer, rescuer will be hanging off this line here and you don't, you don't want him to have the ability to repel off of this or come off of it, okay? But uh, anyway, there you go. Um, we'll stop there. That's three ways you can tie this and this is a basic building block for rescue litter work. This is the long tail bolens. All right, hope this helps. See you on the next one.